Hi everyone, welcome back to the last video of antiviral agents lecture. In this video, we are going to discuss antiretroviral agents. HIV or human immunodeficiency virus is composed of three main layers. The envelope containing surface protein GP120 as well as GP41, the viral matrix containing protease enzymes, and the core containing viral capsid encasing two copies of RNA as well as enzymes such as reverse transcriptase and integrase. The main target of HIV is the CD4 T lymphocytes. As you can recap back in your immunology course, these CD4 cells are essential regulators of the immune systems. So, the first step of HIV infections involves sequential binding of this GP120 to the CD4 receptor and then to human core receptor at the CCR5 or CC CXCR4. This binding enables the viral envelope to fuse with the host cell membrane allowing viral capsid to enter the whole cell cytoplasm. During uncoating, the single-stranded RNA genome with the capsid, within the capsid are released into the cytoplasm where the enzyme reverse transcriptase convert this viral RNA into double-stranded DNA. So next, the integrase enzyme will bind to the viral DNA and transport it into the nucleus and insert it into host cell DNA. Using the host cellular system, copies of HIV genomic RNA as well as shorter strand of messenger RNA are constructed and then transported out of the nucleus. In the cytoplasm, mRNA is translated by the host cell ribosome to viral proteins that undergo modifications and cleavage by HIV protease enzyme. Finally, this resulting structural protein and replication enzyme assemble with viral genomic RNA to form new virions which then bud off, uh, the, bud off from the host cells creating new viruses that are capable of infecting other cells. To date, there are six classes of antiretrovirus agents that are available in Malaysia. Each class is designed to block the virus at specific stage of the replication cycles. So the six classes are the CCR5 antagonist, which Maraviro is the only drug in this class, fusion inhibitors and fulbritides, Nucleosides or nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitor or known as an RPI and another one, non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors or abbreviated as NNRPI Integrase inhibitor, which the drug has word gravir at the end of the name such as dolutogravir and ratogravir and the last one, protease inhibitors that, had word, that has word navir at the end of the name such as atazanavir Darunavir and Ritonavir. Highly active antiretroviral therapy, or known as HAART, usually consisting of three or more antiretroviral agents that act on different targets in the HIV virus. So, the main goal of the HIV treatment are to reduce the viral replication to the lowest possible. So, our main target here is to uh, viral load must less than 20 copies. So, by reduce or suppress the viral replications, we're reducing the numbers of cumulative mutations and decreasing the likelihood of emergence of resistance. So, the treatment outcome uh, the, the one that we want to target is to make sure that uh, a gradual and steady rise of the uh, CD4 T cell count which 50 to 150 cells per millimeter per year and our main target is to make sure the number of CD4 T cells is much more than 250 cells per millimeter cubic and also tenfold decrease in HIV RNA copies 
uh, in the first month and subscription less than 20 copies per meal for by six, eight months of the therapy, by six months of the therapy. And three inhibitors or fusion inhibitors are the class of rock that interfere with the binding, fusion, and entry of an HIV variant, this pink color in this diagram, to a CD4 cells. Currently, we have two drugs that can inhibit viral entry of fusions, each with its own unique mechanisms of action. So the first one, enfovritide, it works by binding to the viral protein GP41 subunit of the viral envelope glycoprotein. So by blocking this GP41, it preventing the conformational changes and thereby preventing fusion with the CD4 membrane. The second agent, Maravirox, works by binding to the human chemokine receptor of CCR5 and preventing the interaction with the viral protein GP120, thereby inhibiting the virus from entering the cells. So, anfovritide is the only parenteral administered retroviral agent that must be administered by subcutaneous injection. Since this drug is an amino acid peptide, it can be metabolized by proteolytic hydrolysis without involvement of any cytochrome P450 system. And elimination half-life is about 3.8 hours. The resistance can be occur in by mutation in this GP41. However, the resistance of enfovrid type with GP41 doesn't cause any cross resistance with the other antiretroviral agents. Uh, the most common adverse effect is the painful erythematous nodules due to the local site injections. In contrast, Maravira has rapid absorption which peak usually after 1 to 4 hours post-injection and this drug is excreted uh, in phases about 75% and remaining will be excreted via urine. So, resistance to Maraviroc is due to mutation in the vitri loop of GP120. However, emergence of CXCR4 virus appears to be more common cause of virologic failure. So, Maraviroc is a substrate for cytochrome 3 a 4 and therefore requires dosage adjustment in the presence of drugs that interact, interact with this kind of enzymes. Now, Moving to the next class of HIV drugs, that is reverse transcriptase inhibitors. Drugs in this class are further divided into competitive and non-competitive inhibitors. So, uh, nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, abbreviated as NRTIs, are structural analogs of nuclear acid that competitively inhibit the reverse transcription by causing chain termination after they have been incorporated into viral DNA. Drugs that belong to this group include abacavir, m 3 citabine lamivudine, tinofovir, and zidovudine. On the other hand, we have non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors abbreviated as NNRTIs which bind to and denature this reverse transcriptase enzyme thus causing non-competitive inhibitions. Drugs that belong to this group include enfavirins, etravirin, nevirapine, and rilpivirin. Abacavir, or in short ABC, is a guanosine analog, is well absorbed and unaffected by meals, is half-life about 1.5 hours and undergoes hepatic glucuronidation and carboxylation. Because of these effects, they require dosage reduction especially to those who have mild hepatic impairment patients. And this drug has good CSF penetrations, about one third of the plasma concentration able to reach the CSF fluids. And it's recommended in pregnancy women, and the most common adverse effect is the hypersensitivity that can be seen within the first six weeks of therapy. m 3 is the FTC, Abbreviated as FTC is fluorinated analog of lamivudine, which is lamivudine is 3T6 because this drug m 2 is a fluorinated of this lamivudine, that's why it can this FTC works. And this drug 
cell goes to the lamivudin has long intracellular half life, which more about the more can up to twenty four hour, and these two drugs can be used for once daily dosing. However, amphetamine is a low CSF penetration compared to lamivudin that has a good CSF penetration. Both drugs was well absorbed and unaffected by meals. So, serum half life is about 10 hours for amphetamine and 2.5 hours for the lamivudin, and both of them cleared by the urine. Is recommended in the pregnancy women. However, this drug cannot be used together because of uh, incident, high chances to get uh, mutation, especially in M184VI mutations. The combination of uh, m 3 cytobin with the tenofovir is recommended as pre-exposure prophylaxis to reduce the HIV acquisition in high-risk persons. However, lamivudin, be careful, they can cause uh, interactions and one of the good interactions with co-administration of the Bactrim. So Bactrim is a trimetrophin and sulfamethasazole usually be given in the HIV patients and this uh, interaction can increase the bioavailability of lamivudin and hence will increase the uh, therapeutic uh, efficacy or therapeutic potency of this drug. Zidovudin, as abbreviated as ZDV, is a DOC thymidine analog absorbed about 63% and well distributed to most of the body fluids. The intracellular half life is about 3 to 4 hours, which requires twice daily dosing of Zidovudin. And is a good CSF penetration, about 95% of serum, serum plasma concentration able to reach the cerebral spinal fluids and is recommended in pregnancy women and is also highly recommended for use as a prophylaxis in individuals who are exposed to HIV. However, uh, these drugs has adverse effects such as macrocytic anemia and neutropenia. Stavudin, abbreviated as DVOT, is a thymidine analog. It is a good oral bioavailability with about 86% and unaffected by the males. Uh, however, the cerebral spinal uh, fluid penetration is not as good as compared to other NRTI. It's about 55% and have half life about one hour and be cleared by the renal clearance. Because of that, stavudin also uh, be used as a BD dose. The major toxicity of stavudin is dose related, which will cause the peripheral sensory neuropathy. And this incident can be increased uh, by isoniazid, rivabilin, and sovincristine. And this drug also may cause pancreatitis and will be elevate the ALT level, which one of the indicators of uh, hepatocytes uh, functions. Tenofovir, or the abbreviated as TDF, is poor oral bioavailability. However, when it taken together with meals, it will increase the bioavailability about 39%. It's a prolonged half life, and that's why it can be used as a OD dose and it be cleared by the renal clearance. It's also recommended uh, to be used in the pregnancy women, and clinically it be given as a prophylaxis combination with the FTC, which FTC is the m 3 cytobine and however, serum creatinine level should be monitored periodically because there are risks of renal dysfunction. Let's move to the next class of antiretroviral agent, which is the nanucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors or short and NRTI. So, I would like to emphasize on these three drugs, which are the efavirins, EFV, nevirapine, and VP, as well as rilpivirin, RPV. Efavirins and rilpivirin are the diarrheal pyrimidines. So, efavirins is absorbed about 45%, and since toxicity may increase owing to increase the efavirin bioavailability, which can be seen after a high fat meal. 
So that's one of the reason efavirin should be advised, should be taken on an empty stomach to avoid this toxicity. This drug has long half-life, it's about more than uh, 65 hours. That's one of the reasons this drug can be used as one daily dosing. And it's metabolized by cytochrome 3 and 4 and cytochrome 2B6. It's highly bound to albumin and CIF penetration about 1.2% from the plasma level. These drugs are recommended for use in pregnancy. However, bear in mind, it should be initiated after the first 8 weeks due to possible of birth defects. Uh, one of the most common effervorants that can be encountered uh, for the patient who took this drug is the psychiatric symptoms such as depression, mania and psychosis which have been observed in after following the initiated, initiation of this drug and you might advise to stop to take this group of drug which is the effervorants. Another uh, side effect is the skin rash which has been reported in early in the therapy uh, but you can uh, ask the patient or you can consult to the doctor to continue the drug which it can resolve despite the continuations. Nevirapin NVP is, uh, is good oral bioavailability which are more than 90% and unaffected by food. Uh, the CSF penetration about 45%, half-life is about 25 to 30 hours. As same goes to effavirens, which can be administered once daily dose, and is not recommended in pregnant women. I would like to emphasize again, it's not recommended in pregnant women. But in clinical setting, it can be used during the labor to prevent during the uh, Level of the woman to prevent the transmission of HIV from the mother to the newborn by giving 200 mg per tablet during the onset of labor and give about 2 mg per kilogram to the infant to the new nest in the three days of delivery. And rash can occur within this first four to six weeks of therapy, but you can avoid it by titrating the dose over 14 days to decrease the incidence of rash. So the uh, severe, if the patient encounters severe and life-threatening skin rash, including the uh, Steven Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necros uh, necrolysis. Uh, you should advise the uh, patients or you can consult to the doctor to stop from taking this heavy rapid. Uh, meanwhile, real pivirins must be administered with a meal, preferably high fat or more than 400 kilocalorie. Their oral bioavailability depends on gastric environment for optimal absorption. Thus, antacid as well as H2 receptors antagonist should be separated in time when given with these real pivirins. And these drugs are contraindicated with the proton pump inhibitors. Uh, real pivirins are metabolized by cytochrome 3 and 4. Uh, same goes to the other uh, NRTI and NNRTI is re recommended to be used in pregnancy women. Now moving to the next class of HIV drug that is integrase strength transfer inhibitors or known as EINSTI in C. So this class of drugs prevent this HIV from integrating its genetic material into the whole cell DNA by specifically blocking the action of the viral integrase enzyme. So drug in this class include dolutegravir and ratagravir. So dolutegravir peak plasma concentration occur within 2 to 3 hours of ingestion. It's highly protein bound about 99% and terminal half-life is about more about 14 hours. However, this serum level may be reduced in patients with severe renal insufficiency. 
The loop telegraph wheel is primarily metabolized via UGT1A1 with some combination from cytochrome 3A family. Therefore, multiple drug drug interaction may occur. So, in the absorption profile, the loop telegraph wheel should be taken 2 hours before or 6 hours after cation containing antacid or lexative sucrose or any oral iron supplement or oral calcium supplements because they can cause chelation with metal ions. And ratigraphil, in contrast, is a pyrimidinone pyrimidine analog and the absolute bioavailability has not been established but does not appear to be food dependent. Terminal half-life is about uh, 9 hours. The drug does not interact with the cytochrome P450 system but is metabolized by glucuronidation, particularly via UGT1A1. Therefore, concurrent use of inducer or inhibitors of UGT1A1 such as rifampin and rifampin may necessitate dosage adjustment of this ratagravir. Adverse effects of ratagravir are uncommon but include nausea, headache, Fatigue, muscle age, and increase, increase the serum amylase and amino transferase levels. Finally, moving to our last class of HIV drugs, which also the last slide of antiviral agents, feature, which is the protease inhibitors. So, drugs in this class work by blocking the action of HIV protease enzyme which will prevent the cleavage of viral polyproteins into active proteins which these active proteins are needed for assembly of new viral particles as well as this drug also can prevent the maturation of new virion. Drugs belong to this class of group include ritonavir, darunavir, saquinavir and tifranavir. So in this lecture, I would like to emphasize more on the ritonavir and lopinavir. Ritonavir has a high bioavailability and this bioavailability can be increased with food. It's highly protein bound and has serum half life about 3 to 5 hours. It metabolizes to an active metabolite via cytochrome 3A and cytochrome 2G6 isoforms. And this drug being excreted primarily in the feces. So, ritonavir is recommended for pregnant women and usually used as a pharmacology booster with characteristic has been used to great advantage when ritonavir to permit low or less frequent dosing with greater tolerability as well as the potential for greater efficacy against resistant virus. So this drug is administered as low dose, about 100 to 200 mg uh, BD in combination with any other protease inhibitor. However, this drug cannot be combined with saquinavir and simaprovir uh, because of this uh, in, can cause interaction, which is increased risk of QT prolongation with uh, PR interval prolongations. Meanwhile, lopinavir is available only in combination with low dose ritonavir which as mentioned earlier this, this ritonavir will be used as a pharmacologic booster via inhibition of cytochrome 3A4 this will result in increased exposure of this antiviral agent and reduce the pill burden lopinavir is a highly protein bound which is 98 to 99 percent and half life is about five to six hour and extensively metabolized by cytochrome 3a which can be inhibited by this ritonavir so uh, this lopinavir and ritonavir also can be recommended for use in pregnant women